Hey guys, welcome back to Trek Yards, the weekly Star Trek show that talks about ships and tech and all cool things. I am one of your hosts, Captain Foley. I'm your other host, Commander Cockins, and we are looking at Discovery again recently-ish. Some scale information was revealed courtesy of Eagle Moss, the Starship mm -hmm. collection, and we've voided it to the Discovery. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the other hero ship, the Shinzhou, which is an older ship. What do we know about what do we know about her so far, Stuart, as to you know have perspective on what we're about to look at? It's an older ship. It was destroyed at the bi Battle of the Binary Stars. The end. Yes, and they said <laughs> she was like an old rust bucket at the time that <clears throat> Giorgio gets Burnham on. So it's mm -hmm. old by the time that she's on it, which is another seven years ish. So it, she might be thirty. Or more years old before we even get to the Discovery timeline. So she's not new. So she's a much more in between step between the NX era mm. and the TOS era, which is why we're hoping that when we saw the Discovery, everything will be even more TOS y because that's a brand new ship. Right. Yes. However, it doesn't really fit in with the established aesthetics that we're aware of for the timeline. And uh, as we said, the, the the length was recently revealed and so we're going to take a look at that right now take a look at it compared to some ships we know and love and uh, see exactly where it fits in size wise and it is worth saying the length is 423 meters and that is an official one uh, and it's worth noting that these might seem you might say guys you're mixing feet with meters well A no it says meters and B John Eves did confirm that they are big ships so but we sort of knew that the entire time, they're not small ships. So the next picture is in scale with the Constitution class again, perspective, so it's a little bit off, but it gives you a rough sense. Um, and I'll, I'll do the thank yous now. Thank you to Chris Kern for making the Shinjo, tremendous model, and thank you to the 3D sci fi renders group on Facebook that helped me get a light wave conversion of this ship. And obviously, Christopher, Christopher Carwell, uh, Cardwell runs a group tremendously so go join that group and you can see tremendous renders of all amazing ships and that helped us get this one ready for this episode so thank you cool. what was the name of the group again 3d sci-fi renders definitely worth a look they gotcha. do stupid amount of renders and stupid in a good way <laughs> it's just so many that's awesome <laughs> yeah okay cool it's a great model obviously it definitely looks like it does in the show and a fantastic job so seeing this first image i gotta say it looks like it could fit in that timeline. I mean, it is it if it's a heavy cruiser or even a dreadnought, something like that. If it's labeled as that, this would be fine. I wouldn't have a problem with the scaling. We don't actually know the class of the ship. We well, well we it's a walker it's, class. It's a walker class, but we don't but know whether it's a scout class or yeah. you know a heavy cruiser or a light cruiser or what exactly it is. Uh, I would say it's probably a light cruiser. That's kind of the vibe I get from it, the feel. Uh, but never really confirmed. So here we see it with the uh, with the Enterprise, and uh, yeah, it definitely looks more advanced. Well, obviously the Discovery reboot style looks, feels, and is more advanced. That's just goes the path of the course. I'm not going to talk about that again because it's blatant. I mean, whatever. It's about scaling, obviously, because the heavy cruise of Constitution Class was not necessarily the biggest ship of the era. They never said that, but it was certainly... There were 12 of them for a reason because they were difficult to make... They were all legendary. They were all, you know, one against a Klingon captain would be, ooh, let's not trifle with them. And yes, bigger does not mean uh, stronger, but you would think it would be, you know, a reasonably good in all fields and reasonably big, especially considering the Klingon ships are even smaller. And considering that, you know, they jumped the Excelsior and see there's this natural evolution of enterprises. So, I mean, the scales yeah. go up in a very linear graph form. And people like, you know, Andrew Probo had to do the C originally. It was like, well, it's going to fit in between the two, obviously, because that's mm -hmm. where this line is going. So other ships, if they're even in the same class, should roughly follow the same thing. And so to be, well, next picture, a tad bigger. It's like, oh, why? <laughs> this is the actual scale. Uh, well, see, yeah, that last picture yeah. really didn't. Uh, yep. The perspective was odd because you couldn't really get a, a feel for that partially on purpose scale. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, here you can see this is quite substantially larger than a Constitution oh. class ship. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we ever got the official crew numbers for the Shinjo. Shinjo. Uh, we know the Constitution class has 430 personnel on board, so 
I mean, but the Discovery has 137 or so, and it's way bigger than the. But we've talked about that. Living Space, check out that yes. video. In Great the past, episode. So, yeah. Uh, here it just looks like a very beefy, bulky ship. It looks like a dreadnought or some kind of battleship. It looks like it could really kick some tail when compared to the Constitution class, which is a heavy cruiser and supposed to be the best of the fleet. So Yes. And it, it not just as a warship, it's an all rounder ship. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, just look at the deflector dish, is the size of the bridge module, and then some. Also, we'll look into other stuff later on. We'll see it's still big compared to the Connie's. But yeah, it's just it's just big. I mean, that, that saucer is huge. I, I mean, the surface area, the volume, the amount of people, and even just the shuttle bay. I mean, the shuttle bay obviously is a little bit smaller than TOS days, sure. But it's like exponentially bigger. And the nacelles, I mean, my goodness. Bigger, mm-hmm. thicker, armored. I mean, yes, if the entire ship was meant to be a, I mean, okay, if if in the uh, Vulcan Hell of the first episode, if it was meant to be a super long range armored cruiser, like specialist built to take the normal size of a ship, like the Constitution class, the saucer, and then add like meters of armor, you know, because obviously unlike Defiant and Voyager and Prometheus, or Defiant and Prometheus, they have a blade of armor. It's thin. It's effective. It has to be really thick, just pure metal. You know, there's no windows on the outer rim because it's just armor. You know, and then you can have all the plate detail because it's got different substances. Same with the engines. You armor up the engines like it just ridiculously, so it can fight any battle. It can, you know, it's designed for that sort of long-term fight. Maybe it's got, but maybe because it's so big, it has a really bad turn ratio and not enough power. Warp engine, warp drives less advanced, so it can't go as fast. You know. Pros and cons. Nothing should be a god ship, and nothing. This ship should not be more capable than the Connie, in any, yeah. in literally in any way possible. It's ridiculous. I mean, look at the transport tech. It's so much older. Got the this lateral sh- vector vector transporters. Yeah, it it should be. You know, the Connie should be able to walk in and just blow it up pretty straightforwardly. Maybe shields are comparable, but it, you know. And yet, this huge ship. I mean, you know, it it, you know, I mean, does that make sense? If it's just this hugely armored version. Uh, yes and no. Uh, there's way too many windows to constitute a really heavily armored ship, in my opinion. You would have like almost no windows on a heavy, heavily it, armored ship, especially with thick armor. It would defeat the purpose, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. And just look at those impulse engines. I mean, the impulse engines of the Connie are advanced, they're small, they're efficient. Okay, yes, this is a good few years before, but I mean, they're like one drive is bigger than both drives put together. You know, it's just. I mean, if this, if this, if this, if I think we said before, if this saucer matched the Constitution class. Then it would be, you know, yeah. It's like, it's like the NXO one. The NXO one saucers is the same size, and so yeah. there, there's the proportions you can sort of relate to that. If this had matched that, then it would be like, okay, we already reached Connie saucer size. It's everything else that is different. But to give it a third bigger is like it doesn't really feel right. Yeah, it just, yeah, it just doesn't fit in the universe, in my opinion. But what do I know? Although speaking of, this is a ship again older. And more comparable, the next picture yes. uh, is a side view of the NX-02, the Columbia, the silver NX, and again, mm. that size. So this is the evolution between these two eras. <laughs> and again, you look at the NX, or the uh, the Columbia there, and compare it to the Enterprise, nice progression. Not super, you know, bulked up bigger in the Constitution, but definitely an advancement. Mm-hmm. The Shinjo in the middle there looks like a totally either alien ship or mm-hmm. um, a totally different uh, purpose altogether, like maybe a small colony ship or I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, that would work. we got more people, but... Or, or, or like I said, long-range carrier vessel, you know, a lot, yeah. of, a lot, of, a lot of shuttles designed to be at the outer ridges to, to help discover planets and then you could argue it's bigger size i think we argued the same thing for kelvin it's like well if it's a long range yeah needs to have more people okay it fits and then we are doing another episode people said why don't you compare it to jj we are doing a scale charts with the kelvin timeline because to be fair it fits into that sizing's like a glove like no no changes need doesn't really fit to prime but it fits into jj verse uh but if it is prime then you know Okay, yes, it could be a just big colony style vessel, you know, just a ton of crew, a ton of It just seems way more advanced than the, the constitution class ships, that's all. And uh, yeah. not really not really pleased about that. 
If you have the next picture, though, you can see a, another indication. You know, again, the size evolution of of of, of time. And I'm not. I'm not even. Uh, I've done a little bit of a comparison to the next era, but it's like again, these ships to Connie to <coughs> an extra Connie to Excelsior to C. They're all. It's a neat little scale, and even things like Reliant to Oberth, they fit into a scale profile yeah. that's underneath the Connie, uh, and then you go above that, and you know. Uh, all the galaxy class era stuff they're all galaxy saucer or smaller mm-hmm. because that's the biggest ship of its time and then obviously yeah. Enterprise E time that's the longest it's not the biggest but it's the longest ship which is still a step ahead and all the ships like the Akira say but all smaller because they're doing different profiles yeah and even yeah. if you're even if you're taking into account the Franz Joseph technical manuals and like the Federation class dreadnoughts mm-hmm. of the TOS era they're just slightly bigger than the Constitution class ships mm. with more you know more armor and more power that's about yeah. it. Because um, so. you could you can thicken up the nacelles, you can thicken up the saucer, you can thicken up everything, but it should be in relation, should be in proportion, should be able to see an evolution. I mean, it's worth you know, noting, the NX-02 Columbia was launched in 2154, right? Yeah. And that's the last ship we see. We know that the uh, Shinjo, based on the book, which is a canon book, was written specifically to be a part of the canon, was active in 2251. So that's uh, 2154, 21, so that's 90 years later, it was active which at the same time as the Connie-ish was around and launched. So obviously it's older than that. But you're looking at minimum 80 years gap and then sort of 20 years gap, maybe. I mean, I guess you could argue that Shinjo, if, if, I mean, I, I'm, if the Shinjo is 50 years old, right? 50 years old. So like slap bang in the middle. Mm-hmm. Then I could say, right, they took the, and again, this is me to retcon it because they didn't put this thought into it. But it's, you know, you could fix... This is how you'd fix This is how I'd fix it, right? The NX was launched, and then they fought the Romulan War with iterations on the NX, NX Tech. That's ten years after. Okay, great. Then you had the Warp 7 engine, as they say in uh, the last episode of Enterprise. Then the Federation was formed, and they were, used, they were gaining tech from all different races. You know, suddenly the styles changed radically because they were getting all this new technology. They were working out how to integrate it, and so they're making bigger and bigger ships to use technology but didn't, didn't have the refined version of it and so for those 50 years ships got a lot bigger maybe on, more comparable to the Vulcan sizings which are mm. actually about this size that's the you know mm-hmm. to compete with Klingons to compete with ship uh, races that had more weapon technology and then that's 50 years and then through the next 50 years they took the exact same tech but refined it all the way down to the classic Starfleet stylings because you can make everything smaller through time so it was that big it was that big boom of technology which then refined all the way back down as long as you have enough gap in between. And then you can see this being this mid period of everything together, you know, when they liked they preferred Andorian engine warp and cell design and they preferred, you know, you need to have a bigger crew because it's a bigger ship. You know, you have to there's not the same automation, so if you're doubling the size of the crew the ship, you go have a double size of the crew to man it. Which wow. means you know, what, what see, do you think I, about I, no, I, I don't. Uh, it's interesting, but I don't buy the whole. Uh, you wouldn't downscale from something that could hold that many crew to something that holds less crew, but be more advanced. You would just build bigger, more advanced ships. <laughs> it could still hold the same complement of crew. Um, I do. It is. It is mentioned in that book, Desperate Hours. I am. I'm reading it. I haven't still haven't got through it. Haven't had the time to really read. But uh, they were comparing the uh, Shinjo look to the constitution class Mm -hmm. and it was uh it's kind of an in joke with the vulcans because the every every class and next iteration of a federation ship has a totally different look and feel about it vibe wise uh Mm. both decorative and size wise and it's kind of a joke with the with the vulcans now that the humans just can't pick a design style and it's kind of a stupid way to explain it. I'm sure there's going to be more explanation later in the book, and I'm sorry I haven't read it all yet, but uh, these little tidbits are interesting. I just don't think that they would go that big and then go back down to being small again. I'm sorry. I just don't think that's a, a natural a natural evolution at all. So, um, personally. Uh, I mean, that the everything being different would explain, obviously, if you look at the Battle of the Binary Star and then the Eagle Moss reveal all different ships uh, I remember John mentioning this previously like everything's so radically different because they tried everything this is the in-between steps we're seeing decades of, of design styling you know there's a ship that has no second no hull no and the cells are literally in the saucer and that's it it's a saucer with themselves in it and they all look different so it's, it's different eras 
it'd just be nice if we saw an evolutionary flow because again you're saying this universe is canon of track from NX to E it's got a line and then this one little period it does this and then goes back on this natural line yeah yeah. And guess what? That's because you're retconning things that don't fit in a thing that doesn't fit. And I'd be fine with a billion different design changes and styles if they say had the NX paint scheme. Because then at least it would feel consistent and be maybe like a third smaller. Like if everything was between the NX and the Connie yeah. or, like a, uh, or like a fifth bigger. But that was more in the cells. Yeah. But to be this much of a jump is not warranted. Yeah, like if it, if, if this fit in size wise between the NX and the Constitution class, but still looked the way it did. It, don't get me wrong, it still looks more advanced with those engines and with that yeah. paint styling. Uh, I would still have a little bit of an issue with that, but I would be, I'd be way more willing to accept it. Uh, just this, it's this big. It just doesn't. I don't understand. It just doesn't work. So, and if you if you go to the next picture, you see it with the Excelsior and a Klingon D seven. Yes, and in time order, roughly. Klingon didn't yes. fit in time order, but in time order. <laughs> yeah, like even the Excelsior is a big. Oh. It was the next kind of step in advancement, uh, not only tech wise but size wise uh, for exploration vessels, and it's still, you know, when you look at the saucer volume, the Shinjao just puts it to shame, and I, I don't know, I just, I, I love the Shinjo design. Don't get me wrong; it looks fantastic. It's a great looking ship. Post post TNG, but post TNG years, NX yeah. Akira variants. Like, oh, that's sexy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, oh. And I would just note that a lot of people, a lot of people commenting on our previous scale video, is worth saying that I've scaled this Excelsior model based on the Star Trek three scaling as it was originally presented. So that's the the numbers kind of go over place, especially like with the bridge module and stuff because they didn't keep consistent yeah. with pieces. But that's what it was meant to be in Star Trek three. And that's its initial appearance, so I'm going to stick with that. But yeah, I mean, what's interesting is that the saucer is about the same, and yes, you could say it's bigger, but you, again, different lines of evolution. If the Excelsior was like an ultra-heavy cruiser, and the Shinjo was also an ultra-heavy cruiser, whatever, or, or super long-range, Connie was just mid-range, then look at the NX to the Connie, second uh, primary hull is the main thing, and then secondary hull is a little bit. Shinjo, primary hull is the main thing, they've got teeny bit secondary hull, but there, it's just a, like, it's lines of secondary hull, and then it gains the secondary hull and splitting out the engines, which is exactly what happens with the NX and Connie. So if you looked at them on the evolu evolution path, you could kind of see a bit more of a, um, a bit more of a way, and also with the, how the engines are, they're, they're flattened up, same with Shinjo, maybe, you know, maybe it's that kind of, it's in that line of evolution. And again, if it was smaller, it'd be better. And, but yeah, yeah. It was a different classification, you know. Oh. But we know it's a heavy cruiser as well, so it doesn't really. Well, let's go to the next picture, and this is the profile view. Uh, here, I don't know. Just again, <laughs> this isn't the one they used in the show. So yeah. the the windows are seem to be very huge on the. Although this one, Chris, had the advantage of having the Eagle Moss Orthos, which yes. had windows, and all the shots oh. on the show. So it's much, much closer. Then they must be very big Vista windows that they have in their quarters, because when you compare it to the Constitution class, especially the Excelsior, uh, <laughs> exactly, you got to look for those windows. Um, huh. They are very, very, huh. very, very, very tiny. They're more like portholes, which you would find on ships like that. And that's what I like about Star Trek, is it's very much ties in with the naval and uh, mil yeah. military aspect of that where even in the nx01 there's little tiny portholes like yep. literally this big you can like look at yep. some spots well w trek goes as small as can be star wars goes let's make it three miles yeah exactly. because it's bigger whereas trek is like right let's make it the absolute minimum so let's we could build it <laughs> realistic in inverted commas but let's make it doable but i mean yeah. this is this is fact just look at the volume of that saucer mm-hmm I mean, that's ridiculous. The Excelsior is a big ship and it's not even remotely. Which is amazing, actually. This this, this makes you think that all the scales are wrong. Um, because, and again, Connie to Excelsior looks totally what you would expect. But you think about it, the Shinjo's been have like seven decks. Yeah, there must be big decks. Bridges on deck seven. It's like. Maybe. Maybe. And, and again, boy. 
the Klingons, man. The Klingons designed this brand new D7 to fight in the war. This best ship. Boy, is it just tiny compared to every... <laughs> The federation, the, the old federation ships at the time. Like I know they want to build small and efficient. Well, it's 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 a good thing that the, the ships from the Discovery, the Klingon ships from Discovery Verse look so <sighs> totally different then. <laughs> God, it, and obviously so much bigger. Cause it's like I mean, what, Klingons would build bigger, surely. Um, although although, hey, give them props. Those warp engines, they're just as much punch as the Connies, and boy are they small. Hey, yep. give them all the props. I mean, those are really advanced. So give them that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, next picture, though, front view, um, which is a, a totally different thing. And again, this shows you how long I'm going to go out of my own frame, how long the perspective is going to be, roughly. That's pretty the exact opposite to what the, what the Excelsior does, which is bring it nice and close and in, and it does the opposite. Mm. It says, let's just be out. Let's have a stretch. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just, it's wrong. The scaling's wrong. That's all there is to yes. it. It's just wrong. The numbers that they were given are just wrong. That's just it. So the next picture, human scale, Stuart. Human scale. I find that fascinating. Yeah. Everyone love that for the discovery. The shuttle bay. That's a, a huge, person. It's a huge shuttle bay. The doors are ginormous. Like 20 years pre-TOS tech. That's but a that, lot of shuttles. Yeah, but that works for me. Uh, that scaling works. I mean... Yeah. You know, when you... For what you see anyway. Like... Yeah. 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 Now, sure. Stuart, what what's the biggest shuttle that isn't really a shuttle? Because there's no point just showing a shuttle to show the scale of this. What's the biggest shuttle you can think of? A runabout. Next picture <laughs> is the Rick Sternbach 23 meter runabout next to it. Mm -hmm. So this ship would happily fit two runabouts back to back. Or side by side. Well, sorry. So that's that's uh, pretty big. Yeah, and. Again, if it's for a long-range explorer that's going to be out and about doing other things far from any starbase or uh, Federation planet, yeah, you'd have shuttles. You'd have a large shuttle bay to accommodate auxiliary craft. Although, boy, if this is post-TNG, do not those two styles look perfectly yep. in tune? Like, push it 10 years, be a little bit sleeker, a little bit... like, And then you have... it, can, And it's designed to carry runabouts. It's like, oh, that would work just perfectly, wouldn't it? Yep. But let's go back to the shuttles that they should have at the era. The TOS shuttle scale. That's how big a TOS shuttle is. So what shuttles is this thing designed to launch? Because you could launch... This is the JJ scale. I mean, that, that's the that's the Kelvin where you can have 75 shuttles in the bay. I mean, that's, that's this scale. I mean, just... It's huge. Yeah. It's not designed for these shuttles. And shuttle pods were smaller earlier. I wonder what shells they would have then. Mm. So the next one we have the uh, runabout parked on the hull. And here with the person as well, you can see the little green guy there. Now this, <laughs> when you do this, I mean, the windows seem to make sense size-wise. Um, They're just not small windows. They're like bay windows of a yeah. normal office building. So that's a window. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool to see <laughs> to runabout landed on the hull. That's cool. This is what we do at Trek Yards. We don't just cut photo Photoshop things. We do new renders and reflection. And it's a big ship. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a yeah, it's a big ship. You know, it's it's certainly big. <laughs> Next picture though, just something little, just something kind of fun. Um, Runabouts oh, scale to the bridge, dome. And that it's, perfect. It, yeah, perfect. Because we've 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 seen zoom outs from that bridge. Yeah. And uh, you can imagine how big a, a runabout cockpit is, four people in there. There's a lot of room in that bridge of the, of the Shinjo. So, yes, this, this works very well for me. This is really although, putting into perspective. Although, disclaimer, I don't think the bottom view was ever shown on the ortho, so this is a bit more speculative. But when I scaled the person, the bridge was far too big to what we saw on the show. Like, those windows were, like, a third too big, too tall. Oh, really? Yeah, it wouldn't. No, her, the scaling was wrong um, for that. So we'll we'll see. But that does not work when you actually scale to a person. It's like she's not that. The bridge is not like twelve meters tall. I mean, it's it's okay. It might be, but or twelve feet tall. But you know, it's it's like <laughs> twelve feet. A, yes, but twelve yeah, meters. No, no, it, it's, 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 yeah, it's a bit too big. It doesn't yeah. look quite right. Um, but Stuart, this last fun new original picture. I thought, well, I want to try and compare it to something. You know, this is a. 
pre TOS, post NX, somewhere in between the ship, right? And we know that everyone sort of evolves in the same rate. You know, half of the Derodex, they skip a they skip a whole thing, become much bigger. Which means, I guess it can be done. But the Klingons, they sort of stay a little bit behind the times, but kind of evolve throughout the year as the big battleships. So I, I looked through my, my scale charts and said, well, what is a ship that's relatively comparable in terms of scale? So you could see it with something of the same size, uh, of, of an enemy force. Because I thought, well, this is, you know, so old, what are we going to compare it to? Any guesses, Stuart? Oh, hand no. Next picture, they're almost the same size, like lengthwise, lengthwise. So this is the Vorcha cruiser. Yes, the big bad, amazing TNG new battleship. Oh, the Negvar fight. was the big bad boy. Yes, but the the original, the yeah, oh, yeah. Garon's yeah. flagship. So it was the big bad at the time. Uh, then the Negvar took it. So they're about the same length, about fifty meters, I think. So this should have been the Klingon ships from Discovery era, is what you're saying. So if, if if the Klingons were going to, you know, build to conquer, they'd at least build this big or bigger. And again, looking side by side, if I didn't know anything about this universe, I would think, hey, these two belong, you know, with each other, like fighting each other. The the, the texturing yeah. on the hulls, the details, the colors, the, the shape of the warp nacelles, they fit in the same era. At least. Yep. yep. And no, they don't. <laughs> so, like I'm 190 years apart, and yep. you can't even imagine 190 years of our technology. Yep. Uh, and obviously, yes, they're not necessarily a fair comparison, but if you look at the way they're segregated in terms of, uh, you know, the back piece of the, of the Vorchar is big, like the front piece, you know, they kind of, I think they equal themselves out a little bit. Yes. But I just thought it was really interesting. It's like, oh, they're almost the same size, so oh, sure. far apart. It just makes you think if thank you. It just makes you think if Starfleet was building other ships of this size around the Colony, the Excelsior. I know the Klingons have more advanced than us in general, but it's like they'd build bigger, surely. That's what they kinda like to do and be opposing and build just things to combat and no, okay, cool. But the last picture is uh, to end on showing the Shinjo in its time place between these two legendary ships and show where it shift, where it does fit into the canon. Um now again this show, this episode, was to show the scale. We know the Shinja doesn't fit. We know the scale doesn't fit. We know the look doesn't fit. We mm. didn't want to go into it as much as I guess we did in this episode to go through that same battle again that we've been going on for the last, like, four and five months. That's all said and done. We know it's a visual reboot. That's fine. But to show in scale is interesting, is new, and finally got this information. Um, and here is it presented in cool new renders. So closing thoughts, Stuart. <coughs> yeah. Should have been facing off against Borchas and Negvars, and it know. needs to be post Voyager, post TNG era, in my opinion. Perfect design, both look wise and size wise, for that. Even Star Trek Online fits in beautifully. Um, Even the cells are like an armored up, because you could imagine the warp grills can get smaller and smaller as you get further and further into the future. Yeah, armor up instead. Yeah, yeah. So it's a great looking ship. I love the look of this ship. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful ship. Um, mm -hmm. I just have issues with its place in the timeline and its overall dimensions and capabilities. I think it's a little too advanced for what it's supposed to be, especially considering it's a much older ship than a Constitution class ship, because um, they're not made the same day. They're actually this is an older ship at the time that the Constitution classes are launched. So, I mean, does it fit? I don't think so personally, but they've made but it. What I'm thinking, it. Stuart is that now I've got this absolutely incredible model is that I should do a kit bash like I did with our recent uh, Discovery d defiant version what if I make a kit bash correct size, correct lighting let's see if I can make a more primey version I'd be down I'd like to see that I'd like to see a constitution based on this design aesthetic and this look Yeah. turn that into a constitution class and I'd be impressed Ooh. or I could just take the nacelles off this put it on a Connie and say what is the in between step. Yeah. <laughs> that look so cool. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, sorry guys. There you go, there's the scale. And tune in soon we'll be doing a scale chart comparison video of both the Discovery and the Shinjo in to the uh, Kelvin timeline, into that alternate universe and see does these ships really fit in that timeline as opposed to the prime continuity? Those questions will be answered soon. The questions that nobody's asked. No, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll pass them. <laughs> anyway. Um 
So guys, if you want to see that, please subscribe to the channel. Yes. Don't forget to like this video. Comment below what do you guys think. And if you want to help us out, you can do so. You can head over to trekyards.com, mm -hmm. or, uh, mm -hmm. click the donate button, or you can just click our Patreon link. It's always in the description below. It takes us to our Patreon page, or takes you to our Patreon page. And you can um, help us out on a monthly basis and mm -hmm. help us create these wonderful shows for you guys all to enjoy on a daily, weekly, yearly basis now. Because we're in year three of Trek Yards now. Three, three and a half years-ish. <sighs> Three of seven, and we're, we're yet to hit our best season yet. Three, then, three of seven, <laughs> and then we then we hit some less good seasons about season seven. But yeah, then we, then we get a movie, Trek Yards the movie, and then we get some we get some spin offs. We've already had us. That God, can you imagine? And if you want to support us as well, just share this video. I looked at the side and see Stuart's face. Uh, share this video. Anyone you think fans would enjoy it, that love the Shinjo, that are confused by the Shinjo, that just want to see it in context. We finally have context. Let's see it in action. Uh, just share, 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 share. And remember, action. as one of the Discovery titles says, context is king. And on that note, we'll see you next time. I am Commander Cox. And I am Captain Foley. We'll Bye see you guys. next time.